From the Woodshed, a casual conversation with Chase Morrill and Ryan Eldridge from Kennebec Cabin Company, the team that inspired the hit show Main Cabin Masters. From the Woodshed is brought to you by Nelma. See the stamp, trust the quality. By Hero Media Arts, connecting small business with new customers. And by Hammond Lumber, your building project partner. Now, from the Woodshed Studios at KCC Headquarters in Manchester, Maine, it's Chase and Ryan. From the Woodshed, I'm Chase Morrill. With me today, Ryan Eldridge. Hey, guys. And filling in for Maggie, Fletcher Morrill. Hi. Our guest today is Sarah Dosty, longtime crew member, longtime friend. So it'll be great to talk to her. You can find us at KennebecCabinCompany.com, MainCabinMasters.com, our Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube channel. Don't forget to check out our online store at shop.kennebeccabincompany.com. We always want to thank our sponsors, Hammond Lumber Company, the official building material supplier of Kennebec Cabin Company, Nelma, Northeast Lumber Manufacturing Association, Hero Media Network, and Kennebec Savings Bank. Man, he's good, isn't he? Fletch is in the house. Exciting. Yeah. Fletch, you're almost... you're. Lining up to take over for Maggie after next year. Yeah. Jesus, Maggie definitely took what old Chip Gaines took right to heart. <laughs> <laughs> She's out of here. Yeah. <laughs> She's on to bigger things now. <laughs> she did predict you taking her spot, though. Yeah. I'd rather be here than at school where yeah. she is. Yeah. I mean, we need, it's gonna. I see natural progression because I have thought about like what's going to happen when she leaves. Are we going to... I know, so, all right? She's going to want... There's no way in heck we're going to get her to get, Zoom with us on a Thursday in college at... And run the podcast. Maybe maybe she'll be one of our phone of fans. From Scotland. <laughs> I think sometimes we should show up at our school someday. <laughs> a live, a live, live podcast. Pod. <laughs> well, hey, oh. she's grooming you, Fletch. That's fine. That's yeah, the, yeah. We'll, so we'll skip Nori, skip Eva, so we don't have to like go through the pain and suffering of having a great relationship, building them up and having us leave them. Yeah, it's true. I'm done with girls leaving me in my life. <laughs> I never want to go through that again. <laughs> Get ready. Um, yeah. What's the best part? Is this the best part of your day? Oh, uh, sounds like you had an exciting uh, day. Uh, it's definitely not the worst. What'd you do today? Um, I went to school. I got out of school early, and then I went to the doctor's, and then I'm here. What'd you go to the doctor's for? Two shots. A checkup. Three what shots. Which hand? Both. <laughs> Hands, man. Which I'm um, sorry, sorry, sorry. Did it hurt? I don't know. Did you get shots when you when we went to Africa? They they got they got the pills we, right. Like, yeah, we got the pills. I don't remember. I remember going up. You there. weren't there. So we went to that specialist in uh, Waterville, and yeah. I I never realized this a thing like when you go to a travel doctor, a de- but a developing country with like, you know, malaria and all this other stuff. And I remember that yellow fever. She looked like the nicest old grandma. Oh yeah, I'm like, does it hurt? No, no. I'm like I got my carpenter. I got to use my hands. She, you're fine. So I got all three in one arm. I couldn't even lift that thing up the next day. Like, <laughs> oh my god, they hurt. Yeah, they don't. They just don't bother me. Yeah. I, well, uh, I don't. I, I don't think I took them. I might have. I don't remember. No, I think we had this conversation. They got pills, right? Yeah, I took the malaria pills. Yeah, that was three years ago. So it popped up in my memories. Was it really? Yeah. Uh, Time flies, and then it doesn't fly. Depending on how you're looking at it. Yes. It's pretty wild. Huh. I've had two crazy needle experiences in my life from doctors. When, when I was a kid, I had like eight teeth pulled because I got headgear when I was you know younger. And of course, I was a husky, round kid, and and I couldn't get regular with headgear. With oh, what headgear do you think I got? <laughs> Childhood was not kind to me. <laughs> oh yeah, fat little Ryan. I had that full headgear. <laughs> no, you did oh, not. Yeah, of course, no, did. you did oh, not. Of course, I did. I did. <laughs> I did. Is that even a thing anymore? I don't. I, I don't know. They have like braces. Yeah. Like the invisible. Like I, invisible <laughs> I had a shop in the husky <laughs> section, sleep with full head gear. And there's a time in my, in my life that I had to actually like wear it to school. Yeah. Man. I bet you were so popular. <laughs> I don't know how I beat the head friends, to be honest with you. <laughs> People got them, so really nice. <laughs> but, anyways, I remember I had to have like so many teeth pulled, and I remember that needle, big needle coming down. like, Eesh. And it was Dr. Oh, he's down on Water Street. Pat Node? I didn't have Pat Node, but Water Street in Augusta, and I'll, I'll never forget that. Mm. And then the other time is when I, um, like maybe 10 years ago, I got a piece of metal in my eye, mm. and I went to emergency care, and I'm so impatient. And I waited there for a while, and they come in like, yeah, this this definitely, you probably should go to the emergency room. But 
if you want to try something, I, I'm willing to try it. And I, I thought about, I did the math, like sitting in the emergency room the whole time, like whatever. So he's like, I'm going to get the thickest needle we have and I'm going to just flick it out. Flick it out? Yeah. He's, he's, he's like, you got to sit there as still as you can be and like just not do anything. And I, I'll never forget that. He, he did it. But I look back on it. I was like, I'm so impatient. I went He didn't that. use the term flick it out. He, he, did, he pretty much did like just like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was just like a metal splitter, and he literally took that thing and just like, oh, 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 that turns my stomach. Yeah, so those are my two stories. It hurt? No, that didn't hurt. The old, the old grandma hurt me, but that did not. How hurt. did you not move or I, blink? I think because I was just thinking, I cannot go sit for sit like six yeah. hours. I was back at work two hours later. Jeez, that's why I like wood splinters better. <laughs> Can you blink like when you have to stay there? I could. Yep. Dang. Yeah, was yeah. A... let's talk about yes. No more dreary stuff. We no, had a great no. day today. We had a busy day. The Kennebec Cab Company was shut down for two days for our big construction and big move, but we powered through it. It looks awesome. It does. Big changes. And it's always one of those things, you know, it's like we talk about it, we talk about it, we talk about it. But then it's like, you know, it comes dead a winner. It's like, all right, this is the time to do it. And we did it. We did it. We had a team today. <laughs> Yeah, at, uh, at lunchtime, you couldn't even walk through that front room. But I mean, people, you got your steps in. I would like to check my steps back and forth, back and forth. Yeah, there was a lot of just, uh, the, you know. It looks really good. It does. I didn't think it was going to fit. I don't know why. I just didn't see all that moving out front, but I think we have more room now. Yeah. Pretty exciting. But much better use of that front room, too. And the girls are going to hate us for the next week or two. They're going to be like, where is this? Where is that? Because they were a well-oiled machine. Yeah. It's all right. Get some good organization. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's International Women's Week. And up next, we have uh, Sarah Dosti, um, female carpenter, do it all. Um, you guys know her for a long time. Yeah. So, like, let's watch this. Um, take, let's watch this video, take a short break, and we'll be back with Sarah. Hi, my name is Ashley Morrill. I am the co owner of Kennebec Cabin Company, home of the main cabin masters. We really wanted to be able to connect with our fan base and we wanted to find a space where we could go and feature um, all of the artists and craftsmen that I discover um, through the show. If you see something maybe in the, one of the episodes of Me and Cabin Masters, you know, you can come into the store and whoop, there it is. We've got a little bit of everything for everybody um, and then some. This is our lighting section. You have these beautiful handmade lampshades. I think every camp needs a hammock. I say that a lot. I think I say it on every episode that every camp needs a hammock. So when you first walk in, one of the first things you might recognize is the canoe bookshelf. One of the first projects that Chase and I built together. The little onesies, love those. Those are my favorite, might be my favorite item. The beautiful art by Helene Farrar. She actually is our neighbor next door. Uh, we're getting new pieces in weekly. Fastest items to always go are these bat boxes. They, they can house up to 100 bats, but you probably already knew that if you watched the show. We've got all the pictures of all the cabins that we've done hanging on the walls. We have all the artists and craftsmen um, that I've worked with throughout the shop. You just really feel like you are, you know, right here with us. So come on in and visit us. We are at 915 Western Ave in beautiful Manchester, Maine. Or you can also find us online at KennebecCabinCompany.com. We look forward to seeing you. All right, and we are back with our guest today, Sarah Dostey. Sarah, thanks for joining us. Hi, Sarah. Thanks for having me. So I get the question for you. Would you like water, coffee, or beer to enjoy during our conversation? You're not on the clock. We're not going to judge you. She's like, It's kind of late in the day for boss. coffee. I know you just had <laughs> right? one, but I would probably be up all night with that. So I've, ha I've had my water quota. I would love a beer, per please. Perfect, because that's all we have. <laughs> <laughs> that's not true. We do have some water. I'm not on the clock, so we're golden. So you get a choice of Baxter Staycation or Baxter Lager Road, and Chase gets the other. Um, they're both lagers. I, I. They're both light and refreshing. I'll go with the pretty teal color. That, that's the hardest question we're going to ask today, anyways. Yeah. Oh, perfect. <laughs> I can handle that. Cheers. Cheers. So let's start. You guys have known each other for a long time. Hmm. We go way back. Way back. Coney. 
Way, way before far, that. farther. Oh, before elementary how, school. Elementary but then school. our schools got separated. From... You were in east side, east side of the river. Yeah. Oh, really? At, well, from. So when it got to the you know, third grade on, I Kennebec moved over to that side of the river. Kennebec River runs right through Augusta, so you guys call it East Side. Like I, I've noticed, like little old school rivalry, like East Side versus West Side, right? Growing up, yes. I went to Catholic school before I went to public school, so that was a big shift. You don't act like it. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> and, you know, I'll joke it aside, and yeah. then um, tell us what your background, what you've been doing, like since you guys went to grade school together. Um, you don't have to go that far back. Right. Yeah. Like, whoa. No. I have two sons. I was a busy mom and entrepreneur. I opened a wellness practice right out of high school. I went to massage school and I did live out of state for a bit and moved home, started my family, busy with my business. Um, fast forward, Reader's Digest version, like pandemic hits, business gets closed, a bunch of things happen. And I had been doing construction part-time with my dad. It runs in your family, right? Yeah, he's been a builder 50 years, Vince Dosti. He's my mentor and um, I love working with him. And he taught me almost everything I knew, but now I have some new skills that I've learned from you guys and crews, but yeah, so. So you've been doing it so like, a I've kid. been doing carpentry almost eight years, I think but now, or nine. Going on the job sites with your dad and probably helping around on weekends. Oh, yeah. And dragged along. Yeah, when he used to do insurance jobs, I'd go in and clean afterwards and help pick up. And I remember, I remember I've always, I knew who you were before you like came here, like in social circles. I remember circles. seeing you at concerts or shows yeah. in high and I, school age. I always knew, I knew like Sarah Doss is a bad, like you just badass, like, you know, like, because you're all doing holistic stuff and Reiki. And I didn't really realize this whole carpentry part of it. But I remember thinking and talking to Ashley and some people, like, it'd be cool to have a female carpenter. Like, literally talking about this and then, like, bring it up a little bit more and to the point where, like, we talk, we're just talking about like, it the day before and you literally walked in the next day. Yeah, you were here getting things ready and I had heard you guys were hiring. I popped in. I was like, so, Ryan, are you interested in having a female carpenter? And you were like, We've been asking for that. I'm like, okay. So somebody delivered. I arrived. And somebody that, delivered. And that was in the pandemic because I remember our first job, we were working out on one of the Belgrade ponds. And I'll never forget, we're crawling around the dirt in the big concrete pucks. You were throwing those around way easier than I was. Like, I was like, man, yeah. I almost wore a tank top so we could compare <laughs> muscles, but I didn't want to hurt your feelings. Everyone knows. Everyone knows. <laughs> But I've asked, what, going, on three or, going on three or four years, right? With you guys going on three, I think yeah. May will be three. Yeah. Time Thank flies. You. <laughs> it's been fun. Good, good, it's good. It's been a lot of fun. Hard work. We all work hard and get dirty and make things look beautiful. So. Are you surprised this is how your life went? You know, like having a family, doing your practice, and now being a carpenter and a whole different career. And you always, you seem to always have a smile on your face. I feel like. You can be totally honest right now, too. Well, I don't want to sound really weird, but like I try to be mindful and aware and spiritual. And for a while, I kept being told that I was like in need of building. And how that unfolded was like my dad needed help with uh, a log cabin, and I always wanted to do it. And I was like, oh, I have this week off. Can I come work with you that week? And He's like, sure. So I show up and my son and I are working for him. And he goes, you need to get insurance and come on with me full time. So I don't have any crew to do this job. And so that was the beginning of more full time work in this trade. And I, I want to do more things. And I know you have this cool project. I don't know if we're allowed to talk about what's happening. Oh, yeah. At the back 40. But I'm really excited about this workshop you're creating and look forward to making things we can sell or putting cabins or you know just the possibilities are wide open so that's what we need that's i what, do smile a lot i like we to need smile. people like that because we have this opportunity we're only limited by people that want to help us get that or people that want to kind of sure, sure, take sure. advantage of it in their own way and whatnot you know okay pretty cool thanks and i you definitely hold your own and i <laughs> with everyone and i want one thing i think is pretty cool is that like yeah against all the guys you wouldn't know but you still have that motherly and care care about 
you know, side of you. And I, I don't know if you suppress. I don't, I don't even know if you mean it comes out, but you just still have that. Like, you take care of the guys. You are you are yeah. ma, ma to everyone. You know, like well, in a fun way. Everyone calls me ma, right? <laughs> ma, where did I leave this tool? Or, ma, what? and I'll go picking stuff up. And be like, hey, you like Jake? Ten minutes ago, you forgot your radio outside. I feel like uh, a mother hen quite often, and I think that's just by nature. Yeah. But it doesn't affect, yeah, the, that doesn't have anything to do with carpentry skills, but it definitely comes out. And I think you have an affinity for Jake. Actually, <laughs> I think Jake was more nervous about her interview today than anything. Oh, yeah, he kept asking me, are you excited? Are you nervous? So what are you going to talk about? What are you going to talk about? Right? Can I come watch? Can I be a fly on the wall? I think it's really neat, though, to see, you know, young girls come up because they see you guys on TV. And, like, we're at the point of the show now where, like, you guys are getting seen a lot and, like, people are watching what you guys do. And, you know, you've had young girls come up to you I've seen out here and like same with Ashley like it's amazing we need more of that I agree I think it's a positive move I mean not all trades are really conducive to both sexes but I feel like if you put your mind to something you can accomplish anything you want so I encourage people to to think outside the box and push themselves and have big goals and try different things I mean I wouldn't want to be a welder but that isn't to say that other women. I know a badass female welder. I know, me too. And who ha who has a veterinary degree? And so, yeah, so girls can yeah. do anything. Yeah. Like, yeah, I, I think girl you, power. I think I'm mean, girl. Yeah, I think being a copper is probably one of the harder ones. Yeah, I don't think cage fighting is as fun for <laughs> girls, but I mean, I've seen them try that too. <laughs> yeah. So how, I got a question for you. How long did did you work with your dad full time? It was like. 30 hours a week for several projects. And then I was trying to do like 25 hours of massage and a bunch. I, I was, the pandemic was not a horrible thing in some ways because it made me slow down and reflect like, where do I want to put my energy? I was definitely like balancing four jobs and doing too many things and needed to slow down a bit. So this has been a good pace. Could you continue to work with your dad if you wanted to? Or is that family dynamic sometimes. I, I hope he like gets some more things going because I would like to keep helping him. But I think he's concerned that he isn't going to have enough help. It's hard to find right. good help. Right. How were you working yeah. with your dad? Was it smooth sailing all the time or was it like button head? You know, it can be tough. You know, my dad yeah. and I sometimes we have, I love to death, but sometimes we just get on each, and my brother the same way, you know, and we always get over it, but. I don't think there was any butting heads. It was more just doing our own thing, you know. Yeah, I I feel like Ashley and I. I would have liked this. I would. I would say way I, more. I way would more pay anything to be go back and see the three of you guys on the job. <laughs> <laughs> so you still do your holistic practice and stuff like that. Tell us more about that. I've been trying to juggle that back in. Um, primarily, I'm teaching at a massage school still. I've been doing that for six years, and that's more like weekends or evenings, so it doesn't interfere too bad with. Uh, my other jobs, but as far as giving massage, I've slowly been trying to reintegrate um, having clients come again. But I mean, I used to do four or five in a day, and it's, it's hard physically work, demanding. It? Well, yeah, as you get older, demanding. and we're the same age, so I can say that. <laughs> yeah. Um, what's more taxing on your body, massage or carpentry? Because it takes a lot of muscle. Totally. And I love teaching people. So I've like had six student, six programs graduate from Panacea and over 35 people I can refer my past awesome. clients to that know what I've taught them. So sure. I feel like I've endowed that to, to back off a bit from that and focus more on carpentry and other projects. I've spoken to a couple guys that have head massages from you and they said like you are like the, it hurts. they've gone yeah they've gone to several people like, <laughs> it's okay to admit it some I, people cry <laughs> some people snore are you like on elbows up on the table oh, like sure oh, all really? sorts of what do you mean some people tissue? snore some people fall asleep oh, 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 oh. and like start snoring how could you i, think yeah, I wish i could do it. that <laughs> well, demonstrate <laughs> <laughs> no he just had shots in his arms oh that would hurt <laughs> Yeah, I've, I've studied like orthopedic and deep tissue and sports massage. So I'm very skilled at assisting people in 
uh, relieving chronic pain. However, it can cause some pain at the moment of trying to remove scar tissue or not remove it, but work with adhesions or something to get more circulation going. Where was Sarah when I came back from the fish tour at that camp? She must, you, you, she must have been on a different job, right? <laughs> Did you see that episode? I came back and I was just a mess of sleeping on the ground. Oh, I think I remember you're like stretching a leg oh, on yeah. a beam. It was, I could have used. You needed some assistance I stretching. Taken I can do assistance. that. Yeah. I don't have to massage you, but I can do some assistance stretching. Oh, yeah. I could have used that. Yeah. Bad. I actually saw that episode the other day. <laughs> <laughs> it, you know, as, as you get older, though, I definitely like feel myself. You wake up in the morning, you kind of like, it, it takes a little bit. You got to stretch out and like just sure. take into that. Work the kinks out. Into that groove and. You know, it's yeah. pretty beneficial. I don't think people think about that. Well, my dad's 69, so I don't think he wants to be doing a lot more. Like, he'd be happy just running jobs and telling people what to do than all the labor. He It blows my mind how strong he still is at stuff, though. Like, am I going to be that strong at 70? But he was always strong. He, yeah. he participated in American Gladiators, didn't he? What? I forgot that. I think he did he that. Did, definitely and he's did. done like bull riding. Yeah. He's done all kinds of crazy. American things. Gladiators came to Augusta. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure your that dad was wild. contested. What? Do you even know what American Gladiators is? Yeah, it's, I do. I went to see him with a bunch of my friends. Oh, that's I, funny. Yeah. I forgot about that. <laughs> Remember those guns that used to like rifle tennis yes. balls each other? And like the things. Really? Yep. Now it all makes nobody is so badass. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, it is the genes. So you mentioned um, Panacea earlier. Tell us a little bit more yeah. about that because I have a story too now. Oh, cool. A panacea story? Yep. Oh. <clears throat> so Panacea School of Integrative Health started, I think she got licensed in 2015 to teach um, a 530-hour massage license program. 530 hours? Yep. Wow. And we offer herbology and yoga th trainings, like a 200-hour yoga training. And the herbology is 1,000, I believe. Um, so, yeah, we... Suzanne it's lo located the, in Hollowell. Yep, Suzanne Cobb got the school rolling and has a bunch of awesome staff, including myself. And yeah, so when I um, Thanksgiving uh, two years ago, I got COVID and I was a long hauler with my taste and smell. And over like you know the last year or so, I was kind of you were talking to me about it, and I was following her on social media. And that laser, they have a laser light therapy now. Firefly, firefly light therapy. Yeah, it's amazing. <clears throat> I don't understand how it works. I'm not a skeptic. I'm like, I'll try anything. <clears throat> and um, yeah, it's, it's laser light therapy. So you, I went down the first time. I um, just turns this thing on. I put the old sun uh, suntan Eye glasses protection. on and regular yep. glasses, and open up my mouth, and she does this stuff and like changes the rays and. My um, nasal passageway, and literally the next day, I had a couple. I smelled a couple of things I hadn't smelled in like a long time. So that's healing, like your olfactory nerve and glands. Like it's amazing. It's I, profound. I'm also, I also respect how amazing the brain is. So I didn't know if it was just mental, you know. Like so, I was still a little like wondering. And over, the, I think I've gone like seven or eight times, and it has definitely gotten better and better. And great, it's pretty amazing. And then she talks about how like. You know, certain parts of your neck and everything's connected. And um, yeah, it works. Like, I literally couldn't. Although, taste. oftentimes you look like you're running around with your head not connected. <laughs> <laughs> you're going in 10 directions, juggling all sorts of irons uh, in the fire. I know. I'm <laughs> glad you got reconnected. <laughs> To your smell. I'm trying. To your, to your smell. smell. <laughs> your head's back on your shoulders. I know. I'm trying to slow down. Maybe yoga would do be good for me. Oh, yeah. Meditation. Yeah, let's do it. We'll start our 15-minute breaks now. We can start <laughs> right? yoga. Right. But, but, yeah, but so thank you for that recommendation. And it, it was amazing Definitely. to see it work and to see some other people's stories. Yeah. So pretty cool. Nice. Yeah. Do we have some – I just got the thumbs up from Fletcher. Do Are we... you bored over there, Fletcher? I mean – I'm all right. He's waiting to show. Maggie us. usually gets more action on here. We need to yeah. get you involved. Uh, do you want the fan questions? Sure. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> you need a mirror so I can see him asking <laughs> it, me the it's questions. It's true. It is a little rough weird. having, yeah, but. Yeah. Let me, can I turn? You can. No one's asked that before, sure. Someday we'll have a, we'll redo the podcast. That's why we have the headphones so you feel like yeah, you're still there. I can there. still hear you. Yeah. If we keep re reaching over 500 viewers, maybe we'll have to upgrade it. True. I hope I didn't break true. It. Yeah, we had a good week. Um, Susan Busier asked, how do you get into the carpentry? How do you get started in carpentry? Uh, well, I've touched on that a little bit, but uh, ultimately, 
aspiring to be as skilled as my dad, I hopped on board with his um, building crew and that's where- What is it I about carpentry that you enjoy? Oh, I love looking at how beautiful wood is. <laughs> then, like, that's but like... what else? Like, um, I appreciate seeing the reaction of the customers on the um, when you do the reveal and you return the cabin to people. Like, I cry when I see their reaction. I'm so excited for them. Uh, that's the reward. Ultimately, that's the best part to to know that they're happy and. But I mean, there's just validation in seeing something that you've accomplished really too. But no, I love looking at like the grain of wood and like finding beauty in something and creating something cool with it. Yeah, absolutely. And did you know early on that, I mean, you didn't necessarily know you wanted to be a carpenter, but that you wanted to do something working with your hands versus a desk job or that oh, type yeah. of situation? I don't usually sit still very well either. Right. So I like being active and physically challenged and mentally challenged. So yeah, I knew for like as a kid, even that I needed something in the trades or just, yep. yeah, I don't do well at a desk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think any of us do. I no. think that would be a tough, tough. But I didn't know that for a long job. time. Right. You right, know, right. it's like, well, you get conditioned, right? Like, right. yeah, yeah. Yep. should have known better. Yeah. Um, Lynn Gates asked, as a woman that is interested in learning a trade, where do we start? Well, hopefully we'll be teaching some classes here in the future too yes. at the shop. Maybe that's on the yeah. agenda. Uh, you know, oh, yeah. Definitely a goal. Cool. Yeah. I'll yeah. help you with that. I have some experience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I said, we're only limited by our, you know, our time and imagination, but people want to learn. You know, it's like yeah. we've gotten some really interesting um, emails it was a couple of years ago there was a, we got that same one from some, a young lady he's like you know can i pay you guys to teach me how to do this we're like well we don't really have the time like yeah but we talked about you know a class or like you know first time maybe female home buyers or first time any home buyers because yeah. let's face it like i don't know a damn thing about cars or or damn, some th things like but those people that are mechanics don't have a clue about what we do you know right. and like my friends laugh at me when i try to like talk about their trade and then i kind of want to laugh at them when they get a tape measure you know but it goes both ways of well course. and i feel but, like electricians have apprentices or whatever yeah. i'm sure that there is a line of resource out there for people to get um on board with someone shadow them learn from them there's got to be resources around but i i haven't really looked at... let's do it okay. yeah um put it on the list <laughs> laura hawkins asked what is the easiest and hardest thing about being a female carpenter Good question. Well, the easiest thing about being a female carpenter. I was gonna say you get your own bathroom, but you don't. Right. <laughs> yeah. That may be Let's a, not go there. Yeah, that may be, that's what maybe one of the hardest things. That may be the with hardest with all the boys. Thing. But they try to respect. But I love it when Brad has wipes at the job site. That's always a bonus. <laughs> um, I was pretty excited you caught me cleaning the toilet at the back at the back forty. I was so impressed. I don't know very many men that are willing to clean toilets, and I appreciate that you well, were I, doing yeah, that. <laughs> definitely didn't marry a housewife. <laughs> God love her. Uh, you know, like, let's talk about like, um, like job site humor and stuff. I was kind. Of, I'm not gonna lie. I was nervous when you, like you came on because there's respect, you know, and guys used to can be like, you know, job stuff. And the guys like yeah. sitting around and um, guys have been very respectful. And I think that you put them in their place, you know, with your well, own style. Well, I can style dish it humor. out, yeah. and yeah, and I can take it. I have broad shoulders, so we have fun and no hurt feelings. And if there are, it's well, like I'll talk to you tomorrow and try to straighten it out and apologize. Right. Okay. Um, Veronica zero six two six one nine seven zero nailed it. Asked, um, was your favorite favorite hilarious memory with working with Jedi? That's a good. One. <laughs> oh, I think we the have a Jedi fan of here. The Jedi. <laughs> uh, well, I learned a new thing from Jedi that if you spit on a screw, it doesn't split the wood. He taught me that too. So I don't know if that's hilarious or not, but like I see him a lot of times with 
holding a screw in his mouth. And then when he told me the trick about it being salivated on, I, <laughs> I assumed that that's why he does that. So I've learned a new trick and it does really work really well, except it. for on old, old right. wood. But it, it really does into. work. It does. Yeah, but don't try it once and put it back in your mouth when it's hot. I've done that. Like oh, ouch. <laughs> Yeah. Damn you, Jenna. Yeah. Um, I think it's hard to answer that question because we all, there's just so many funny things we all do. You know, we always have a pretty darn good time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Razorback74 asked Is there a project you'd recommend for a beginner level woodworker or a carpenter? Maybe building a birdhouse or Bird. bat house or like that house i know yeah. you're, i know where you get a great and set of yeah a yeah those are cool bench is pretty easy and... <clears throat> yeah. it's got to hold weight though that one i'd be a little more concerned right? about <laughs> <laughs> but yeah like bird bird house a bad house a good, good flower box but, yeah did you guys have industrial idea. arts in in school in junior high school we did and then the budget got cut we had well, mr varney yeah do you remember i think some we were doing some project after school one day and we were kind of horsing around in the industrial arts lab and i think we were walking on desks and a desk moved and i fell and split my lip open like a little accident prone sometimes now she tells us that was not your application uh, no. yeah. <laughs> we had because we had i was just thinking that we had industrial arts and i remember like the um i built a coat rack in oh. high school or junior high junior school? high. Yeah. And, and I, I think it took me like eight weeks to build that. I could build that in like 10 minutes now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We had ju junior high industrial arts was mandatory. In high school, it wasn't. And But there was. There, there was in the old Flatiron building. But, it, you know, then they also had the Votech program. But it was nef nothing. So a coat rack, like. You know how you guys have those apple boxes downstairs? Yeah. I've been seeing a lot of cool stuff on Pinterest for like shoe coat racks made with those. That'd be a really cool place for Razorback 74 to to try to to make. Start out. Yeah. yeah. A, a well, nice coat rack. Yeah. yeah. Watch our social media. Put your shoes underneath and yeah. a coat rack. That'd be fun. It was pretty simple. I can't believe it took me that long. <laughs> I probably had only my... get an hour of class each. Yeah, time, and I probably had to right? take my headgear yeah. on and off. <laughs> <laughs> Can't use that when using power equipment. Uh, <laughs> get, it, get it caught up. <laughs> Fletch, you guys have that in Miranda Cook, do you know? Um, they used to, but they, they we don't have it anymore. They used to have it like downstairs, but we don't have it anymore. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah. yeah they still have like the room but, with like all the wood. Nope. I said I was gonna say I remember taking home ec, but that was in high, junior high as well. Oh, I remember yeah, home ec in high school. Junior high. In high school? Yeah. We made no bait cookies. Gardner had more. And, Gardner had more money than Coney. I don't, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. They, need, making... they need more help in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, comment. No comment. But but if you are, you know, a young woman looking to get in the trades, there are some programs out there. You know, a lot of websites. Well, and I know the uh, career centers of Maine are known for helping people that are out of a certain profession to like re-educate themselves. So I'm sure that would be a great resource to look for retraining if someone wanted to try a different industry or. And what's, what's kind of cool now that we're seeing it. Cause you know, because of this voice we have, we're asked to like talk to schools and stuff. And so I'm going to go talk to read and read next week. I have a friend, oh, cool. a carpenter uh, lead guy there and they're doing their own in-house training now. And I was talking to our friend, Robbie Chadwick from EJP cause EJP has been doing, University uh, Prescott for maybe five, ten years now, where people can go into that, into oh, their, that. into their in school, in house um, university. It's a year program and come out with a job. So some of these local businesses are taking it upon themselves, which is pretty cool too. Well, and right now, I mean, is the time to do it because everybody's, yeah. you know, obviously all the uh, trades are so in demand, mm -hmm. but you know, there's uh, there's opportunity for training for all that for anybody you know if you're interested you know most companies are willing to train and get a chance to try it out and hopefully it works and you like it i mean look right. we've had brad going for this long right <laughs> right yeah i actually have a coney student who's interested in doing an internship cool that i've got to reach out and find a time to make it work but so we got to find one gardener one then right to balance it right yes <laughs> one, and, one and a half <laughs> i love it 
Well, so that I, actually, that, yeah, that might be my funniest, my favorite story about Sarah working with us is that she was a oh, good sport yeah. and was. You're not throwing me under the bus. Are <laughs> no, you? no, no. You're going to tell everybody? The mascot? Oh, <laughs> oh, come on. That was funny. But come on. In high school, you were the mascot. I did it for a little bit for some of the pep rallies yeah, you and did. stuff. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I think that'd be so much fun because you can be anyone you want under that thing. <laughs> but you have to take off the big thing to do flips. I was a gymnast, so I had to like do back handsprings and oh, really? do stuff in front of the cheerleaders. And it was not my favorite job, but I took one for the team on that. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, I'll wear your mascot outfit. They have a nice new and improved one. It was better. Yeah. And then we, yeah, yeah we did the Chadwick episode. And yeah, that was fun. That was fun. So fun. Well, I want to thank you for, for coming in that day. Go, Cody Rams. <laughs> yeah, I'll joke on the side, but I want to thank you for coming in that day and, you know, thank you for, you know, sticking with us and, you know, being a leadership to all those girls out there. And hopefully, and I know you've affected some, some and hopefully you'll affect more. I didn't realize, yeah, all the likes on just the yeah. introduction of today's podcast is yeah. pretty cool. Thanks for having me. Keep up the good work. Right. Yeah. Thanks for, uh, working with us and thanks for joining us Thank all you. right our next we got project Good pointers job. all right and we are now on to project pointers our project pointer today comes from bridget pat and tom all right i'm gonna take over now because we have a whole big paragraph and i'm known to talk fast my buddy chip Gaines and i <laughs> all right this is from bridget we took this early 70s timber frame cabin hit up in the woods in the White Mountains of New Hampshire and revived it with what supplies were available during the height of the pandemic. We threw the pine at it, keeping it all local as possible thanks to homegrown lumber and Hancock lumber. Our team consisted of my two sons and two talented carpenter friends who all met up one snowy day while backcountry splitboarding and decided to take on the challenge. Sounds like my type of people. After 18 months of sweat equity, the boys have a fantastic lodge to live in as they pursue mountain life. There's still work to do, though. We haven't tackled how best to seal, stain, or paint the original rafters. It appears they have never been coated, but who knows for sure. They're hemlock 6x6 beams. We are tempted to throw a solid stain over them, but we are concerned how well it will cover and how best to apply it. This cabin is on a mountainous side, and it is tall. We're tempted to use a sprayer, but think that may be too messy a process. Plus, none of us have any experience spraying. So the question is, what would MCM do? We throw Jake at it. <laughs> Jake is our painter. So we've got a few pictures on the screen. Uh, kudos to splitboarding. I have one. I haven't used it in like 10 years. You have a splitboard? Yep. Nice. You guys want to take it back up? Nope. Um, <laughs> that's cool. Oh, it's on a foundation? Or maybe that's just a plywood hardtail. That's a foundation. That's a foundation. Yeah. So my thoughts are, is you're going to do a little bit of all the... Whoa. Nice job. Good job, guys. Yeah. What's that? They already painted it. Whoa. That is a part time count competence. Come on. Come Whoa! on. Now. You, they you really, they did throw... really did throw the pine at it. I love it. They, they just want us to see it. They did just want us to nice see job. it. Nice job. Look at that. Dang. Look at that fireplace. This is a borderline <clears> cabin. <throat> <laughs> Bridget, Pat, and Tom, nice job. I wouldn't be scared to spray it. Yeah, I think they definitely tackled it and got the job done. Holy smokes. So they just have to spray. That side looks done. I can't tell. I think they did it all. Right? No, 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 no. They want to know what we would do. We would do a little bit of all of it. We'd do some spraying. We'd do some brushing. We'd do some rolling. I think... That you know, we might do a little power washing if it needs it. That's it. That's key. Prep. Are they talking about the the rafters inside? So that might be it. Is that what the hemlock six by six beams. Oh, maybe it's that. Maybe the guy that read too fast. Yeah. You the original rafters. Oh, okay, there we go. There's still work to do. We haven't tackled the, the original rafters. Okay. It appears they've not been coated for who knows. I mean, it, so those are darkening up. That's why. Okay. See the original? No, but it says a solid stain. I wouldn't, would you? Can we call them? 
We can't call him. Next time. It looks like they polyed the walls, polyed everything else. Everything else pops. Yeah, the floors definitely have a gloss on those. Look at them. Definitely don't spray those. So take that back. <laughs> right? I thought you. I thought they were outside. <laughs> okay. Don't spray those. And we were right with the prep. You're going to want to get tape and lots of plastic, painter's plastic. Yes. If we're talking interior, don't spray it. I would probably just seal it up. It's do, gonna, you, do, you, why, do they need to? I mean, you can leave it the way it is. Yeah. It's not going to rot anymore. I mean, it's just going to darken up, if anything. Yeah. I, I like the contrast, personally. I do, too. And I can tell you right now, Chase would leave it that way. Yes. Whether we're at the budget or not. <laughs> and you know what? I, you guys have done such a great job. Like, I don't think anything needs to happen to it. Man, look at that place. Nice job. Nice but job. I would not throw a solid stain over them, I don't think. If they're interior, leave it alone. If they're exterior, you could definitely go with a solid stain. Nice job. Though. That's amazing. Yeah. Can we rifle through those pictures one more time? Does it, do any of you guys need a job? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, maybe the rafters up above. You see how those rafters up top? Maybe. Because there's a some I, on that other side there. I would stay. I do. I'd go stall, solid black to tie it in with the um, railing. Personally, if that on the outside, solid black. Wouldn't that be cool? You might as well but, paint it with creosote. <laughs> but Don't paint it with creosote. Black's in. Yeah, that inside's beautiful. Oh, here's another one of the stairs. Nice stairs. Jeez, it's a fireplace. All right, we we get it. We get it. New Hampshire oh, no. cabin masters got this shit together. <laughs> Oh, and they oh, get the oh, northern come... lights. <laughs> well, next, well, next is going to be uh, jacked up work trucks and beautiful <laughs> right, trailers. Right, right, right. Oh, yeah. I think you guys did a great job. Yep. I don't think you have to do anything in the inside if you don't want to. Nope. And the exterior, just find a you know, solid stain or transparent stain that matches up close. And don't be afraid to spray it. I think it's going to be quicker and easier. I mean, you lose more. You use a little bit more from the overspray and all that, but... Save it in labor. Yep, absolutely. Nice job. Looks very nice. Very nice. Very nice. All right. Wow. Really nice. <laughs> Pretty cool. Yeah. Pretty cool. All right, then we <laughs> we are on to fan questions. <clears throat> We're all just like, okay, you um, don't need us. Joe Borgios. Sorry if I was um, said your name wrong um he said i am getting ready to have a new roof put on my camp and was wondering how mcms decides to put on the roof metal versus singles is all it costs and budget or does it depend on what the camp owners requests cost and budget yeah i don't think anybody requests requests an asphalt roof nope has anybody ever nope. i don't think so i think nine times out of ten people prefer the metal roof and you know it really does go asphalt screw down and then your standing seam. standing seam cool Sc um screw down is not screw down is great you know you just have to might have to go up there and change the, the grommets right like every what 15 have you ever changed them never never either right i mean worst case scenario you go up with a tube of geo cell or and just <laughs> right? hit the ones that are leaking if you can see them in my experience Shingles aren't made like they used to be. A 30-year shingle in the sun is not going to last that long. And I, it's because of the environment. You know, they're not allowed to put the same stuff, like the petroleum products in it. But they just don't last. No. You know, yeah. metal is bulletproof, especially at camp where you, you might not get up there for a while. You might not get there for the winter. And that means, I mean, the pitch of the roof mm -hmm. makes plays a big difference. Like Ryan was saying, you know, how much direct sunlight it gets. Your venting, you know, all that stuff does a isn't is a factor but also you know who's doing it right we're yeah. all about subbing it out these days and we're getting older but you know if it's something you're doing yourself asphalt is going to be doable doable screw down with a buddy if it's straight if it's straight you don't get in you know have you, you might have to strap it if you don't get into too many valleys and then Standing seam, you're gonna have to sub that out. Um, 
Sorry. Mary Brandon asks, <laughs> yeah, everyone in, in your car group has had a cabin on the show, but Jedi, when will you do a cabin for Jedi? When Jedi wants us to. <laughs> when Jedi wants us to. It's not because we haven't picked him. Yep. And he's got a lot of great ideas. Yeah. He's got his, we were just talking when, when yesterday, his tool bus. Oh, nice. He wants to convert a school bus into a mobile tool work bus. He talked a ton about a uh, houseboat. Quant yeah. Houseboat. And then he's talking about a Quanta up north for snowmobiling. Yeah. Yeah. And then a pop, you know, a small cabin out in Pittston. So yeah. that, that's a, that's on him, though, not us. Jedi's a free spirit. He's the youngest one of us. And yeah, we're, we're here and we're ready when he's when he's ready. <laughs> you know? Yes, exactly. Um, Tina Wines asks, is there a structural purpose to put sheathing boards um, on at an angle? But sometimes they're horizontal. Ryan's brother's camp downstairs was horizontal, but the upstairs was angled. Good there's, question. Yeah, there, there's, Very. there's definitely a. There's definitely a structural integrity to putting your, what do, what do they call it? Oh, Dixie always uses it. When you, uh, you used to see it a lot in old camps when you would put in, cut in your diagonals. Oh, lead, lead corners? Lead in. Lead, lead in corners, right? Yeah, something like that. They used to. Yeah, in your corners. It was 45 and it was. No, through the whole wall. Sometimes they would do it right. too. It was something about lead in, cor lead in corners yeah. or something, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That should be the trivia question. But it, it, it is structurally more sound yep um especially when you tie we can tie in two floors i know that at, um my, at my brother's camp because i think because we weren't sure what was going to happen on you know, the second floor it was just easier because it, with the, the basement you know having all those well and i and think stuff. yeah upstairs on the second floor that front was all windows mm -hmm. and there it had that small loft space so there wasn't a lot of interior walls that helped Hold it Stop the camp from you know moving around a lot. But on the gable end walls where we did go a second story, that's when we put it on an angle. Yeah. Good eye. You know, it, it takes a little bit more time and more ways. It costs more money. It costs more money, but sometimes it helps. You know, again, when the camp's really open, and if it's open exposed framing, you don't have anything locking the inside in as well. You're going to get a little bit of racking and movement, so it helps. But Help. these days, if we throw the spray foam at it. Who Yes. Gonna hold it right together. <laughs> and you got to remember, too, that though, that's just a sheathing board or the plywood in like traditional buildings. So that we're going to put another layer on, too, that's usually going to lock yep. it together even more. Yep. Yeah. So if you guys have any questions, send them to podcast at maincabmasters.com. Yep. Very good. Or if you have photos of your camp and want to uh, show, show them to off. us. <laughs> And your beautiful <laughs> northern lights. White mountains. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you think we're having a good day and feel good about ourselves. <laughs> we're just kidding, guys. <laughs> All right. And so now we are on to trivia questions. Oh, I don't have them picked out. All right. Read last week's. Oh, Maggie would have had them picked it? out by now. Read them and we'll tell you which one was it is. Um, how, many how many counties border Canada? That was the week before. Um... Name one. It was five, though, just so you know. <laughs> Chase and I both nailed it. Name one of the two main counties that have the same name as two Latin American countries. Is that it? No. No, what are they? Uh, uh, same name as two Latin American countries? That's another question. So, mm. which Peru? Is, Peru. You say count counties? You say counties or towns? What? Countries. Read the last. Okay. Towns and countries, Peru. True. Mexico's not South America, but no, it's not. Colombia. Colombia. Colombia yeah. Falls. Um, which is the furthest north, Moscow, Maine? That, that's what it was. Uh, I'm going Moscow, Maine, because I think it's a trick question, or they're the same. I think they're the same. The answer is Moscow, Russia. How do you guys not know? And that? that's what I thought originally, but I didn't. I overthought it. How did we not know that? Okay, do you want me? To What's the difference? It just says Moscow, Russia. I have no idea. Maggie would have looked that up and had it down in the foot. Yo, I'm not Maggie. <laughs> Am I? Uh, you know one? Yep. Uh, Interesting. Now I'm going to Google that. Um, what was Ferdinand W. Duramara's claim to fame? Spell that name, please. F-E-R-D-I-N-A-N-D-W for like his middle name. And then D-E-M-A-R-A. Yes. Like Damar. Damar. 
What was Ferdinand W. DeMar's claim to fame? Claim to fame. Can I, can I be just to ask us a couple more on that? Because I want to see why you picked that one. First one I found. <laughs> Uh, and it's the shortest one on this list. <laughs> <laughs> That's not... All right, Valid. It's a little 10-year-old. All right. Yeah, if you know the answer to this question, if you're the first one to send it to podcast at maincatmasters.com, we will, uh, yeah, send you along a prize. Guess what it was? Guess why he was famous? Well, no. no don't that's... tell us. Oh, you're still alive? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Little, you got a little more to learn, <laughs> but that's good. I feel like you digressed yeah. from the last time. You're not fire. It's okay. We still love you. Yeah, and we still want to hear from all you fans listening. So if you're our biggest fan, tell us why and include an email and phone number. And who knows, we may uh, give you a call even if you're at school or at work, or both, or both. And if you have questions for Ryan and I or anything main cabin remaster related, send us those questions. And also, if you have questions about a cabin, a cabin you've worked on, a cabin that's done, you just want to show off some pictures, send those along. Podcast at maincabinmasters.com. Thanks for joining us today, Fletcher. Yep, no Thanks, problem. buddy. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Sarah, for joining us. And thank you to our sponsors, Hammond Lumber Company, Nelma, Hero Media Network, Kennebec Savings Bank. And From the Woodshed, we'll be talking to you. From the Woodshed has been brought to you by Nelma. See the stamp? Trust the quality. Hammond Lumber, your building project partner. Kennebec Savings Bank, helping our local community save, thrive, and grow for over 150 years. And Hero Media Network, connecting small business with new customers. From the Woodshed is a production of Kennebec Cabin Company. See you next time.